Hey there, I'm Bruce. Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this headboard from readily available materials at any big box store. It only took a couple of hours and it's really simple. Let me show you how I made it. While you see me measuring, finding level and plumb lines and getting it all sketched out, let me start off with some basic background of why we went with this particular kind of headboard that is attached to the wall rather than being attached to the bed. In a room that is a little smaller, you end up saving a good bit of space since this barely sticks off the wall at all. Secondly, by attaching this to the wall, you don't have any issues with the headboard moving around or wobbling. There are just a few basic tools you need for this project. Something to cross cut with. Only two corners actually get mitered. The rest of them are 90 degree cuts. We are using a miter saw. Construction adhesive, a brad nail gun of some kind. It doesn't have to be cordless, but that's what we had. A jigsaw or coping saw to cut around any outlets. A pencil, a level, and a tape measure. That's it. We didn't even have to paint or stain any of these materials. They were all purchased with the color already on them and they are readily available at pretty much any hardware store. We thought we would have to touch up the ends where we cut off the stain, but that ended up not showing at all, so you could totally skip that step. Spend a little extra time getting the outside frame set just right. This will be what all of your other pieces will bump up against and what you will use to measure the inside pieces off of. Use a few finish nails to secure the frame. If you can, put a few of them in the studs. You're just trying to get the nails to hold enough until the adhesive dries, which will do a lot of the holding. Here's a little trick I picked up from Ryan, who you see working here with me. If you secure the two vertical ones right in the middle, you can kind of pivot the top miter in or out by adjusting it on that pivot. This will help you get really tight miters in case your cuts aren't perfect or the boards are a little bit warped. Let me just tell you, boards like this are always a little warped. Then, once you have the miters looking really good, you can secure the rest of the frame with a few more nails. These boards are made to put up a wood wall. They have a tongue and groove on opposite sides. It's just really thin shiplap. You start at the top and as you work downward, you overlay the tongue from the piece onto the groove of the piece above it. If you wanted to, you could leave a little gap by spacing them with a couple of nickels, but we just butted them together. As you go, be sure to stagger where the ends of the boards go. This random pattern will make it look much better overall. The packs of boards come with random links, so this is pretty easy to achieve. You just kind of have to watch out for it. We cut the pieces as we went, which made for less waste. Oh yeah, three at once. That's how it's done. For nailing, we would nail through both pieces at once where the tongue and groove meet up. You'll end up with fewer nail holes and it will just hold better. It did help to have another set of hands to hold, but this is totally doable by yourself. A lot of this project was just repeating the same steps over and over, working your way down. That's why I mentioned how important it was to make sure that your frame was set so well so that as you reference these pieces, you don't have any big gaps or anything as you go along. If you happen to have a piece that is way too tight and don't want to recut it, take another board and just give it a smack. Be careful not to split the ends, but by using another board, it helps distribute the force.
To mark as you go, you have to flip the piece over 180 degrees, mark while it will line up with the other piece that you just cut, make the cut on that side, and then when you go to secure it to the wall, flip it back over. The reason for this is the boards come in a pack with the tongue and groove on one end too, so they overlay each other from end to end as well as each of the long sides. If you have a longer piece that is having trouble fitting, sometimes you can flex it a bit so both ends will fit between the space you have, and then when you nail it in, the rest of it will draw up. See how good the random pattern makes it look? We had to do a bit of work to get one of these boards cut around an outlet. I took some measurements and Ryan marked it out on the piece. Then we took it outside and used a jigsaw to cut out the rectangle for the outlet to fit into. Oh, can I shoot this? You do. Ryan works fast. They have a production wood shop, so when they're on a job, they want to work as fast as they can safely. It became kind of a joke that I would have to tell him to slow down so that I could get something on video. One time, I left the room for about five minutes, and by the time I came back, he had already reattached the outlet cover. I think you get the gist of putting a cover back on, though. I'm actually up here at Lakeside Woodworks. Who you saw in the video was Ryan. He was helping me, he's one of the partners, and we knocked this thing out in like two hours. This is a very easy, approachable project. You can find all the materials readily available at any hardware store, and um, it just went on super easy. I think it really changed the room a lot. You could knock this out in a short afternoon. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.